What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some r slash am I the butthole? <laughs> if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too. And before we get into the good stuff, I do have some thank yous to some new members and some rejoins too. So we had Talon Sage. Thank you so much. TNT Man 360 for rejoining. You know I love you, dude. Mama the best with a rejoin and Poppy Searchfield with a rejoin as well. Thank you so much for your support. I cannot tell you how much it does mean to me and how much of a difference you do make. And for everyone for spending 20 minutes or so out of your day with the channel and getting involved. Big things coming soon. Just watch this space. And let's crack on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Conflicted daughter KH. Am I the asshole for not acknowledging I have a sister? Nine years ago, we found out that my 28 female mother had a five year affair with someone she met from work. My parents divorced and she went on to get remarried to the man, Greg. My mother moved her husband and his daughter, Kylie, 26 female, from his previous marriage into her house and I lived with them before I left for college. I remained in minimal contact with them until Kylie joined my company and started working in my department. Nobody was aware of our relations since we had different last names and I told Kylie not to disclose anything about this. Last Friday, while clocking into work with a few of my coworkers, Kylie came up to me and asked if I could come home for a family dinner. By lunch, our entire department was gossiping about it and Kylie would confirm their suspicions. Fed up, I told the department that I do not have a sister. Things died down at work and I agreed to make it to dinner considering it was my mother's birthday. At dinner, I was bombarded with questions about why I refused to acknowledge my sister at work and refused to even call her my sister. Greg told me I was a petty bully for embarrassing Kylie at work and that he has had enough of me mistreating his daughter. He told my mother that my misbehavior was a result of my parents coddling. He demanded that I address him as a father and Kylie as my sister and tell everyone at work that too. At that point, I had enough of his relentless chastising, so I told him that all he signed was a marriage certificate and not adoption papers, so I am not his daughter, therefore will not be addressing him as my father. I brought up the fact that I know my dad had created an account for my college fund and paid child support each month, but they used the funds to purchase a new car and pay off credit card debt. Back then, they told me that I would have to get a part-time job to help with paying off my college because money was tight since they just got a new car. I always found it weird that Kylie never had to get a job to go to college and could afford to stay in a nice apartment during. Kylie was crying by the end of the argument. My mother broke down and yelled at me to stop while Greg called me an ungrateful bitch. I told them that if they only had the capacity to acknowledge and care for one daughter, then do not expect me to be in Kylie's life as her big sister and left the house. I guess Kylie posted about it on social media because friends and family called me up. Some told me I was being harsh and unfair to Greg and my mother who took care of me as well as Kylie who had nothing to do with this while some understood where I was coming from. So, am I the arsehole for doing this? And there is like a quite a little, little bit of an update and some answers to the questions from OP. So they, they did a bit of a post on that. And I'm never sure whether to cover that straight away or do some comments, then cover it because I don't want to sway judgments and that kind of thing. So I'll give my judgment, then we'll cover that comment and then we'll move, then we'll have a read of that and see what that says. And I would come into this one straight as a not the arsehole simply because they, they stole your money and after your mother went and cheated on your father and then used that money for their, for their own benefit, then the guy has the cheek to tell you you have to call him father and the other one sister. It's like, hell no. You're 28 years old. Who the hell does Greg think he is? <laughs> Bloody Greg. Let's move on to what OP says and, and we'll go from there. So OP goes on to say, thank you for the overwhelming response. I'm still in the middle of reading all your responses, but there seems to be some parts that are confusing and I couldn't elaborate due to the character limit. So I thought I'd clear things up here. Where I'm from, a lot of people live with their parents when they're in college, but I lived with them for a couple of months before college. Child support is mandated until 18, but my dad wanted to make sure I'm well taken care of. So he continued until I was independent at 21. My dad left me two thirds of my tuition fee and it was decided that my mother would pay the other third. Unfortunately, child support in my country isn't heavily regulated so people could get away with not paying and people can also get away with misusing the funds. In my case, my dad deposited the money in a joint bank account that had both my mother's and my name on it. She could move funds in and out of that account without needing my permission. Conversely, I could too if I knew about it. 
And where I'm from, it's really common for parents to have joint accounts with their children. So it makes sense why she got away with that. My dad moved out of the state and eventually out of the country, but we're still in close contact with one another. I didn't tell him about the job or having to pay for college myself because I didn't want him to worry. I also didn't find out about the college fund until finding the bank book and statements in the safe right before moving out. At that point, I just decided to cut contact and get out of there because there was already no point in arguing. About Kylie, my boss in HR knew that Kylie is my stepsister, but that information is kept PNC. Our workplace has the tendency to gossip and Kylie refers to me as her sister around family and friends. I asked if we can maintain our relationship at work strictly professional, which means not referring to me as her sister because I didn't want our coworkers to think that she got into our company because of our relations. She agreed. As for her social media posts, she posted a solemn picture on Instagram and captioned, tonight is the most terrible night of her life because her family was breaking apart. When prompted in the comments, she elaborated on how I blew up at them and said I would be cutting ties. While I understand that Kylie is innocent and that I shouldn't extend my resentment for my mother and Greg to water, so I treat her like a co-worker but I can't bring myself to see her as family or a friend and I'm finding it even harder to do so after a social media post. Sorry for the super long comment and I hope this clears up a few things. If there's anything else that's confusing, I'd be glad to elaborate. Now I'm going to have to go on another little one on this one because anyone who turns to social media to, you know, stir things up after the fact, they're not innocent in my eyes. You know, you, she knew what she was doing by saying that, you know, a very, a very cryptic tonight is the most terrible night of her life when she knew people, as they always do on Facebook, oh, What's wrong? And then she goes, I PM you, hun. But she elaborated in the comments, which makes it even worse. Oh, my word. Don't get me started on that sort of stuff. But we move on to the comments to see what they say. And we'll start with Foria Fear saying, they stole your money. Sue the shit out of your cheating mother. To be honest, I'd stop calling her mother. Cheaters don't deserve any better. And Reddit Buju says, and quotes, I guess Kylie posted it on social media. And then says, this is where I have a problem with Kylie. I was a bit miffed that she alluded towards a relationship at work when you had previously told her not to. Now she has turned a private argument into a sympathy farming session. I don't like how she is playing this. Not the arsehole. You seem to have handled yourself really well with Greg. Blended families are complicated. It doesn't help that step parents sometimes want to overstep. And worry about you, ho, says, not the arsehole. They broke up your family, stole from you, and now want to try to force you to accept them as family. Let this be a lesson. You finally cut them off. Please, you don't need this shit from them. And we'll have one more from a vast 2006 saying, not the arsehole. Not only do you not have a sister, you only barely have a mum. She clearly transferred her familial bond to daughter of her new husband. You, on the other hand, are a constant reminder of her choice to betray you. They made sure the daughter of the newly minted family unit wanted for nothing, while misappropriating funds that came from your father for you and used them on themselves, screwing over both your dad and you, yet again. I'd say it's high time to take the social media yourself and air all the family dirty laundry. They see fit to tell the story in a way that has people siding against you. It's only fair that you are to correct the public record. Now, what would you do if you was in OP situation? How would you handle it? Would you turn to social media like that last comment said? Let me know in the comments below and we'll move on to the next story. And our next story comes from Anti Going. Am I the arsehole for telling my friend last minute that she can't come to my housewarming party? My fiance and I recently moved to a larger house and decided to throw a housewarming party for our friends and family once we got settled in. COVID cases are down in our area and everyone we invited has been vaxxed. The party is planned for this weekend and around 15 people will be coming. We sent out invites three weeks ago to give people ample time to prepare. One of my best friends, Jill, was really excited and immediately said she'd be there. Backstory, Jill has two dogs. They are sweet animals but completely untrained and not very socialized and she got them during COVID. Jill called me last night and said that her dog sitting plans fell through and she has no one to look after the boys during the party. She asked if she could bring them along. I immediately said no. It's a new place with strange people. They are not house trained. I've been over to her place before and there's always dog shit and piss on the floor. We have a very small backyard with a garden. I've been cultivating and I don't want the dogs ripping it up. And for all I know, some of the plants may be poisonous to dogs. Jill got angry and pointed out that my sister would be bringing her toddler. I said that was completely different. Jill disagrees and is now saying I'm excluding her last minute because she has dogs and I don't care about them and their happiness. 
That's not my thinking at all. I believe dogs are Jill's priority and that she needs to stay with them if she can't find anyone else. Now, whether this has been a uh, issue where you are or whatever but i know locally a lot of people have been saying like because of covid and lockdown a lot of people have got animals and i can see it as like i can see if you're thinking straight and you know you want an animal for the long term and all that sort of stuff it would have been a good time to you know adopt an animal or something like that because you can't you will have the time to train it whilst you're home that would that would be a good thing but i i've heard a lot of people are getting it for like companionship and not thinking about the long-term future when they do go back into the office what's going to be happening with the animals and around this area there's been quite a lot of reports of that and people just generally not training the animals as you know with my stories when i've been walking poppy lots of people just let their dogs run off the lead and run up to poppy and chase her around and do all this kind of thing and it's very very frustrating but in this story comparing a toddler to a baby yeah it just doesn't make no sense to me it's completely different and one line did jump out to me and it said um jill disagrees that she's excluding her last minute and she doesn't care about them and their happiness and i can't, it had me kind of thinking and i don't mean this in a really nasty way or disrespectful way but i thought about my friends and stuff like that and their pets i don't really think about their pets happiness when i'm not around them you know i do it's not like i'm, I'm at home now thinking oh i wonder how that pet's doing and I mean, I do wish them all the happiness in the world, of course. I wouldn't wish anything negative on anyone's pets, but it's not something I sit there and think about all the time. And I certainly wouldn't want untrained animals running around 15 new people in a new environment. It is pretty stressful for the animal too. Let's think about it that way. So I'm going to be going with a not the arsehole in this situation. I think it's pretty cheeky to, you know, think that you can take around untrained pets around someone's house. I would never consider doing that. And I just find it surprising other people would. But dogs are my dog says, not the arsehole. And the fact that she can't leave two dogs at home alone for a few hours just shows how untrained they actually are. She's either lying about the dog sitter so she can bring them or they are very untrained to the point that they can't be left in their own homes by themselves. And Grizzly Mama MT says, not the arsehole. A toddler, while typically a mini terrorist, <laughs> usually doesn't bite unless provoked and wears a diaper which is only changed by the parents. Untrained dogs are 10,000 times worse and super messy. And I'm betting she wouldn't be getting down on her hands and knees to clean it up at your place if she won't even do it at hers. An evocative enigma says, not the arsehole, oh my God, the nerve of her to compare your sister bringing your nephew to her not being allowed to bring her dogs. You shouldn't allow untrained dogs into your new home and don't let someone who thinks her dogs are on par with a child that is actually family to you. Feel free to disinvite the entitled arsehole free of guilt. An infamous Wasabi9007 says, Not the arsehole. Dogs do not equal children in terms of bringing them into another person's home. When I owned a dog, he was all I had. I spared no expense, loved him with all my heart and so on. However, I would never think that just because an event I was invited to allow guests to bring their children, I could bring my dog. That is a ridiculous notion. And Amelia the Mouse says, Not the arsehole. The fact that there will be children there is a perfectly good reason to not want two untrained dogs around. The children were allowed in advance. Her dogs were not allowed at last minute. Though you wouldn't be the arsehole if you said no to them coming in advance. If she wants to not be excluded from things, she needs to take responsibility for animals' behavior and get them trained. And Sint Elvis says, Not the arsehole. And quote, I don't care about them and their happiness. I mean, even if that's the case, so? I don't care about any of my friends' pets. Why would anyone? The relationship between pet and owner is extremely personal. And we'll finish off with Smudgykin saying, not the asshole, toddlers usually don't pee on the floor and eat plants. And then there was a lot of comments below this one that made me chuckle because it was like, um, there was like, you are so very wrong, my friend. <laughs> now, what do you guys think of this story? How would you handle that situation? Let me know in the comments below and we'll move on to the next story. Follow me, you cheeky so-and-so. Now, our next story is from Mont Gatto. Am I the arsehole for being insensitive about my mum's skin cancer scar? So my 30 female mum, 52 female, is a doctor and she discovered she had a skin cancer spot on her nose about three months ago. She had some tests and fortunately, it was on the very early stage, so very good diagnosis. She had it removed two weeks ago. They removed a large patch and closed it with stitches so she has right now a large line wound across her nose with multiple stitches. Now, my mum is going through a menopause so, so she's been lately a lot more sensitive and emotional than usual. I always do my best to be there for her and cheer her up. 
we are very close. And with this whole skin cancer situation, which comes at the same time as she's having issues with my toxic grandparents, I've tried to be as supportive as possible. I'm always available if she needs to talk, if she needs to run errands, if she wants help with something, whatever. I noticed that apart from the cancer itself, my mom was also very worried about the scar that surgery would leave. I thought that she would be relieved when the pathology of the removed skin came. They removed everything, yay, but she has been increasingly worried about the scar. Yesterday, she went to a colleague's derm office to check the wound and she told her that it was not healing well, that it was not the right choices of stitches and that it would probably leave a scar. Basically, hell broke loose. I can count with my fingers the time I've seen my mum so upset. Angry with a surgeon, angry with her dermatologist, angry with her best friend who is a surgeon and told her that it was fine. What did I do for this to happen? I can't believe they did this to me. I will have to carry this my whole life. It is so strange. She is usually very rational and not superficial. And this is all because of a scar, not the cancer itself. I tried to cheer her up by telling her to wait for the wound to actually heal, to give the cream she is using some time to work, to talk with her best friend to discuss options if she thinks it's too noticeable. And at the end, I told her something like, well, mum, you had cancer and now you don't. I know you're upset about the scar, but being cancerless is what you should be happy about. Well, she took it against me. She called me insensitive and dismissive of her issues and hung up. And now she won't pick up the phone. Maybe I am insensitive. I don't know. Cancer is horrible. Both of my grandparents, dad's side, died of it. We have family members struggling with it. My mother-in-law has lymphoma and can't walk or eat and has the scar literally from one ear to the other. We are healthy, we have money, we have jobs, we have food. A scar is something so tiny compared to all of this in my opinion. And she is so beautiful. I don't think this would make her any less beautiful. I am just thankful that she doesn't have cancer anymore. Am I the asshole? Now this is a tough one because I can tell OP is full of love and support for their mum but they would still be the arseholes and it's it's a very simple one you know going through what my dad went through and things like that it's that you're just invalidating how she's feeling right now. Yes of course being cancer free is is a big plus but that you're still saying you know what she's talking about isn't as important as being cancer free and I, I, I get where you're coming from but it almost feels like you said you need to get over it because you're cancer free but it's like yay I'm cancer free but I've still got like a big scar on my nose that's going to remind me every single day of it mum might not feel as beautiful because of it so you can't dismiss those feelings because of that she's allowed to feel like happy that she is cancer free but also unhappy because now she's got a scar on her nose you know it's a perfectly valid feeling and I think I would feel exactly the same and I had a very, very similar conversation when my dad was with us and he was going through his mesothelioma. And sorry, I'm not trying to make this about me or anything. I'm just trying to find something comparative to it. And my dad had to have a, a chest drain um, in, the, in, in his side to like drain his, drain his lung every, every week or so because um, it would get fluid in the lung and then they have to drain it. So they put this drain in and he had like a pipe basically hanging out the side of his the side of his chest. And he was very, very conscious about it because he used to wear a vest to be comfortable, comfortable all the time and you could see the, the drain sort of hanging out. And he'd, be, he'd get nervous about it when, you know, new people were coming in the house and he wouldn't want them to see it and he'd try to cover it up. Something very similar to this story happened and, and this particular person said, you're getting treatment now for your cancer, so you, sh you should be proud of that and not have to hide it and blah, blah, blah. And my dad was like, well, I am happy I'm getting treatment, but I am still embarrassed about it. And again, it's a perfectly valid feeling. And if you dismiss these feelings, you're just doing your mother no favors. But I get where you're coming from too. You're very, very happy for yourself that your mum is now cancer free. And again, that's a valid feeling too. But you need to respect your mum here and I think you just owe her a little apology. And I hate calling you the arsehole for it because I can see there's a lot of love there. But I'm afraid you are the arsehole to me. And we'll start with Grey Navy Black saying, you're the arsehole. I can understand where you're coming from. But just because others are in a worse situation doesn't make it disappear. I'd probably send an apology. And Food Baby Baby says, you're the arsehole. Most people are going to be upset about a scar in the middle of their face, especially when it sounds like it could have been avoided with different stitches. Blaming it on menopause is extra shitty. And Octopi High says, here's the problem. All of this is your opinion. You're not the person in the situation. Objectively, you're not necessarily wrong. In the grand scheme of things, a scar is much better than skin cancer and death. But what you said invalidated her feelings. She was just diagnosed with cancer, went through surgery, and now found out that the scar 
she thought was going to be minimal is likely going to be prominent on her face for the rest of her life. That's a lot. She's completely within her rights to feel frustrated and angry about her situation. Light, you're the arsehole. And Rainbow Dreaming says, and quote, my mum is worried about having a visible scar in the middle of her face after a cancer scare. Was I an arsehole for telling her to get over it? And says, by the way, you're the arsehole because you've told her not to worry about a scar in the middle of her face. And you're kind of blaming the menopause. I'm going through perimenopause, if I got that right, and I can tell you my emotions are just as valid as yours. From what you said, I get the impression you think is making her over emotional, and I don't know her. Maybe she's behaving badly outside of this. But remember, being a teenager with hormones going bonkers and you're upset or angry and you don't know why, you're confused and irritable. Guess who had to deal with that? Your mum. If she's stressing you out by oversharing and that's why you're impatient, then set some boundaries so you can only talk for short amounts of times if needs be, as your mental health is important too. Otherwise, educate yourself on the menopause and the perimenopause and how hard it is and try to be more empathetic. I feel sorry for your mum and all she's going through and I don't even know her. And we'll have one more from Realistic Voice 8 saying, you're the arsehole. Look, I'm a cancer survivor. The treatment for my cancer, a rare kind of pancreatic cancer, left me with lifelong health issues. It sucks, and my feelings about those issues get dismissed all the time because at least you don't have cancer anymore. Yeah, I'm grateful, but when people point that out, it invalidates my very valid feelings about how cancer irrevocably changed my body. Let me feel my feelings. In the long run, a scar isn't a huge deal, but it's a scar on her face and she's allowed to be upset about it. Cancer doesn't mean you never get to be upset about anything else ever again. Her face is scarred, that's upsetting, and telling her she shouldn't be upset because she needs to feel happy about being cancer-free and only happy about being cancer-free is being insensitive and dismissive. Yes, other people have it worse, but you're allowed to feel feelings even if you aren't the worst off. What you're doing is something called toxic positivity. When you dismiss someone's valid feelings of sadness or anxiety or anger by instead telling them that all they're allowed to feel is happy and grateful. Your mum can be happy about a cancer prognosis and sad and scared about a scar. And being sad about the scar does not mean that she isn't happy or grateful about her cancer prognosis. Let cancer patients feel their feelings. And I I can't agree more with that comment. But what are your thoughts on today's selection of stories? What are your verdicts on today's stories? As always, I love to hear them if you have a moment of your day to share them. If you do have a moment of your time as well, if you would consider clicking that like button as it massively helps our channel and just a huge thank you for spending 20 minutes or so with me today and getting involved. Thank you so, so much for what you do. If you'd like to support the channel further, it is always appreciated but never expected by clicking that join button down below for YouTube and clicking the link in the description for Patreon and joining up there. Thank you so much for your love, your time and your support and I will see you you cheeky so and so <laughs> in the next one take care guys much love i've been thinking that i can't let you go hey can you wait a little while why won't